Andy, did you hear that? Come on, will you? Did I hear what? That whistle. <whistles> That's the Rinso White whistle. And Rinso means us. That's right. Rinso gets clothes Rinso White. And Rinso presents the Amos and Andy Show. <laughs> Rinso for a wash that's. Rinso white. Rinso for a wash that's. Rinso bright. Rinso white and Rinso bright. Those swell, soapy, rich suds get shirts and sheets, towels and table linens gleaming white. And lovely washable colors stay fresh and bright, safely through wash after Rinso wash. That's why women everywhere are saying... Rinso for me. Wash day's a cinch with those peppy Rinso suds helping. And ladies, you'll be mighty proud of the results. Next wash day, get Rinso for... A Rinso white wash. A Rinso bright wash. And now, our stars, Amos and Andy. It seems there's been an epidemic of breach of promise suits in Andy Brown's life recently. And now that the latest one against him has been dropped, Andy is in his office telling Amos and the Kingfish of his new design for living. No more women. I tell you, fellas, it's the truth. I is tired of these breach of promise suits, and I ain't going out with no more women. And that's final. Well, Brother Andy, staying away from women's is going to keep you out of trouble all right. Wow. Yeah, but there's only one thing. You know, these breach of promise suits you done had, Andy, they kind of hit you by surprise. Mm. Now that you has cleared the decks of all women, why don't you make sure that there ain't some other gal around here that you done proposed to and forgot about it? Well, now, there's a coincidence right there. A tear. I was just checking up on that very thing before you fellas come in here. Huh? I was halfway through my address book now. See there? Here it is. I was up to the L's. Oh, the L, huh? Yeah, now let me see the next one here. Eleanor. <laughs> hmm. Now I know I didn't prepose to her. Brother Andy, uh, that one you can cross off. Yeah, now the next L I got you is Elsie. <laughs> I know I didn't prepose to her neither. She's the big fat one with all the double chins. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember seeing you with that one once, yeah. Yeah, she got a mess of double chins, all right. Oh, yeah, I never knowed which was her chins and which was her lips. I never knowed where to kiss her. <laughs> you didn't, huh? No, I finally worked out a system, though. Oh, uh, what was that, Anna? I'd hold a piece of candy up to her face, and whatever opened up for it, that's what I'd kiss. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, that was a smart idea, sort of using the candy as sort of a range finder. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, up to now, Andy, you seem to be pretty much in the clear with the gal. Yeah, I can't think of nobody that could cause me no suing trouble. Not a single gal. Uh-huh. I is, uh... Wait a minute. Hmm. There is one that I just thunk of that I might have pre-posed her. Yeah, there is one that I... Well, hello, Henry. Hello, boys. Hello. I was just out shopping with my wife, thought I'd stop in. We met that Sylvia Adams. She was shopping for her trousseau. That's the one. <laughs> I remember now. I pre-posed to her about two weeks ago when I was sitting on the sofa with her. When I asked her to marry me, she just smiled. I never did figure out whether she smiled yes or smiled no. Well, from what I see of her shopping today, I would say that she definitely smiled in the infirmative. Yeah, uh, uh, Henry, is you sure that it was the trousseau that she was buying? Well, I see her buy a long white dress. It had orange blossoms embroidered all over it. Uh -huh. She bought sort of a net veil that went over her head. And most important of all, there was a long train behind her. Do that long train behind her make her a bride? Brother Andy, don't make her no engineer. No. <laughs> well, fellas, they got me again. I can't stand another breach of promise suit. Well, what is he going to do? Come on, Kingfish. We're going over to see my lawyer, Gabby Gibson. <laughs> Uh, 
So there you is, Gabby. Uh, Andy feels pretty sure that Sylvia Adams is going to sue him for breach of promise. Now, how are you going to handle the thing? Well, first, we've got to see if we've got a case. Yes, indeed, we've got to see if we've got a case. I know. We'll claim that Andy wasn't in his right man mind when he proposed. He was a little testing the head. Oh, but, Gabby, I was the same as I always is. Good, we got a case. <laughs> but, Gabby, you don't get the idea. I don't want to be sued at all. Oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. You want to be what is known in the legal profession as sue proof. Uh, yeah, that's uh, exactly the idea, Gabby. Well, it becomes sue proof. There's only one way. Only one way. If you was in the army, if you was a soldier, you couldn't be sued. Nobody can sue a soldier. Well, wait a minute, Gabby. Wait a minute. You think I is in good enough condition to pass the physical for the army? Oh, Andy, don't be crazy. You got all you can do to pass the physical for being a civilian. <laughs> Yes, indeed. I guess you're right. Look at that fat on him. Look at that fat. Now, wait a minute, Gabby. There's plenty of muscle there. Where, Andy? Where? In my arm here. Feel it. Let me feel. Hmm. People's getting two red racing points for turning in that stuff. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Chad. I got another idea. Since Andy can't get into armor, why can't he borrow a soldier's uniform just long enough to see the gal and convince her that she can't sue him because he's in the army and that will end it? Oh, Kingfisher got a great idea. And it just so happens that Larry Simpson just got a medical discharge from the Army. I can borrow his uniform. Yeah, and you certainly got a right to take these steps, because with all the breach of promise suits you has had, you sure have been a victim. A victim of the law of supply and demand. The supply and demand? How do you think of that? Well, it's always the women who supply the trouble, and the man who gets it, that's supply and demand if I ever had it. Yes. <laughs> Now let's go back to the Lodge Hall and hear the Mystic Knights of the Sea Quartet singing Runnin' Wild. I'm running wild, lost and cold, running wild, mighty boy, feeling gay, like this truth, every mile all the time, never lose. Fisher, it was so nice of that fellow to lend me his uniform. How it look on me? Well, let me see here, Andy. The leggings look pretty good. The pants seem to fit all right. The jacket with the belt and, yeah, the brass buttons don't look bad neither. Only thing, Andy, uh, why is you wearing that steel helmet? Well, this fellow I borrowed the uniform from done give his cloth hat to his little nephew for a souvenir, and all he had left was his helmet. Yeah, now, the next thing we got to do, in okay, case Sylvia Adams asks you, is to figure out what these campaign ribbons is on your chest, what they mean. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got to know that. Yeah, well, now, let me see here. There's a red one there with some white stripes there. And, uh, there's a yellow one with the green and blue in there. Mm -hmm. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, what's this pink ribbon? I ain't never seen one like that on a soldier before. Oh, well, I slapped that one on there myself. Uh, <laughs> kind of helped the color scheme. <laughs> Yeah, but Andy, you can't do that. You see, every ribbon on there means that you has been in action. And pink, uh, pink means gals. Well, then I really earned that ribbon. 
Now, look here, Anna, look here. You might have been in a campaign with a gal, but they don't give ribbons for that. Now, now, now wait a minute, duh. That yellow ribbon there has got two little stars on it. Look at that, two stars. I wonder what that means. Yeah, well, generals wear stars, don't they? Hey, that's right, Anna. And you got two, uh, two stars. Uh, Anna, you was a major general. I is, huh? Oh, boy, that show is... Uh, hold it, uh, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. What's the matter? You was a major general on the chest, but on your sleeve, you was only a corporal. Mm, yeah. Now, look here, it must be some other reason for them two stars. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I remember now, yeah, I remember the thing. Reading it in a newspaper once. Yeah, you know, that little bear there with the two stars. I remember reading it in the paper and said, them stars means battles that you was in. Oh, I do? Yeah, and we better decide what them battles was now, in mm -hmm. case this Sylvia Adams asked you. Yeah. Now, let me think, uh, let me see here now, what the uh, battle, uh... How about Bunker Hill? <laughs> yeah, there you go again. How can you say something stupid like that, Ender? The Battle of Bunker Hill wasn't in this war, Ender. Oh, it wasn't? No, it was in the last World War. <laughs> Well, well, where can I say the battle was? I gotta know where I've been fighting. Yeah, I know what to tell her. Tell her you fought in the Battle of Sicily. Yeah, well, where is Sicily? I knowed it was coming. I knowed it was coming. <laughs> yeah. Ain't no soldier ever been as ignorant as you is. Yeah, you know. If I was your lieutenant, I'd have you peeling potatoes for the rest of the war. Yeah, well, where is Sicily? Listen, dumbhead, Sicily is in the northern part of France. <laughs> Sicily in France? In the northern part. Mm. Now, come here. Look on the wall here on the map here. I'm sure. Now, let me explain the thing to you with my finger. Yeah. Now, look at here. Sicily ought to be right about now. There's the northern part of France. Mm. Now, Sicily ought to be right about... Uh, uh, see, there's the northern part we got here now. Yeah. Hey, Kingfish, wait a minute. Look way down here by Italy. There's Sicily all by itself. Where? Right there. Hmm. Moved it right out of France, didn't it? <laughs> oh, never mind. I'll think of something to tell her when I see her. Now, look here. When you walk into it, though, now, when you walk in her house, act military like a soldier. Uh -huh. Yeah, the more military you is, the more she'll believe you. Yeah, well, I better be getting on over there. Yeah, one more thing now. What? Now, look here. You don't look like a soldier with them sideburns on your face there. You better get yourself a military haircut. Yeah, all right. I'll go right over to Shorty's Barbershop and get one. And listen, Andy, till this thing blows over, let people think you was a real soldier. That goes for Shorty, too. Leave it to me, Kingfish. I'll see you later. <laughs> look, Shorty, don't look surprised. I've been in the Army since last week. I was a real soldier. Yeah, and, and, and you as a corporal, too. They, they sure moved you up fast, didn't they? Yeah, well, all you got to do is look at me, and you'll see why. Yeah, you, you sure make a good soldier. Uh, you, you, you was a perfect fighting man. Uh, you, you were just a type of looking for... Uh, the army sending lucky to get you. Uh, they're taking anybody, ain't they? <laughs> Is that so? Listen, they was plenty glad to get me, and boy, it sure feel great being in the military service. Yeah, I, I know. I was in the Navy once. I enlisted in the War of 1926. Wait a minute, Shorty. There was no war in 1926. Yeah, that's why I enlisted. I, it, it was safer. <laughs> So you was a sailor, huh, Shorty? Yeah, but I didn't like it, though, Andy. I had to sleep in a hammock for three years, and I couldn't stand it. Then I found out what was wrong. Yeah, well, what'd you find out? You know something? What? You ain't supposed to hang both ends of the hammock from the same hook. <laughs> well, listen, I ain't got no more time left for talking. Let me put my helmet down here and get up in your chair. I want you to give me a military haircut. You do? Yeah. What kind of a military haircut does you want, Andy? What kind did you got? Well, first there's the regular one where I cut the hair right down to about a half inch. Then there's the extreme where the extreme one where I cut the hair right down to the scalp. And then there's the permanent military haircut. Uh, permanent? 
Yeah, no cutting. I just uproots the whole thing. <laughs> well, give me the regular one, Shorty. Plug in them clippers and make it snap it. Okay, Andy. Here we go. You sure got a bumpy scalp. <laughs> Shorty, hurry up and finish the haircut, will you? Yeah, I'm doing as fast as I can, Andy, but it, it won't take long with the clippers. I'll be through in just a second. There you will. Shorty, uh, you didn't take too much off the top, did you? No, no. I I, I left enough on top so you so you could... Uh, you you still have about an inch and a half. Uh, I, I left a big wave up there just like you... Uh, you you got plenty of hair up, up, up there. You, you, got, you got plenty of... Uh, hello, Baldy. <laughs> Ladies, this is the story of a bride My named... name's Sally Shepard. I mean, Mrs. Jones. Call me Sally. Sally really got a load of wedding presents. And how. Got a big silver tray from Aunt Florence, a beautiful tablecloth from Cousin Ruth, and a lovely check from Uncle Jonathan. But the one thing she wanted, really needed... I didn't get. Couldn't get. There weren't any washing machines to be had. So, wash day after wash day, Sally rubbed and Sally scrubbed. But Sally's wash, well, it wasn't what you'd call terrific. But then came the dawn. Sally found out about Rinso. Lovely, soapy, rich Rinso. Even without a washing machine, wash day's much pleasanter. Rinso soaks my clothes clean. Yes, ladies, as little as a ten-minute soaking, plus a few light rubs on extra grimy places, and clothes are ready to rinse. And what's more, Rinso gets clothes really clean. White clothes are not just white, but... <whistles> Rinso white. Washable colors come... <whistles> Rinso bright. Safely, even after scores of washings. No wonder Sally doesn't mind clothes washing these days. Don't mind doing the dishes, either. Rinso slicks them up in far less time. And Rinso's easy on my hands, besides. Ladies, try Rinso on the dishes tomorrow. And next wash day, for a wash that's Rinso white and Rinso bright. How are you? Sylvia, what's this I hear about you getting married? Somebody saw you trousseau shopping. It's true, Joan. Remember John Winters? Well, he's coming back on furlough in two weeks, and we're going to get married. John Winters? Why, Sylvia, I had an idea you were going to marry Andy Brown. Andy Brown? <laughs> oh, Joan, I haven't completely lost my mind. Well, I did go out with him once or twice. As a matter of fact, he just called to say he was going to drop over here. But I've never given him a serious thought. Well, that's wonderful about you and Johnny, Sylvia. Oh, thank you, Joan. And when Johnny gets back... Oh, there's somebody at the door, Joan. That must be Andy now. But I'll talk with you over the weekend. Okay, Sylvia. Goodbye. Coming! Why, Andy! 
me. That outfit. Oh, come in. Okay. Forward, march. One, two, three, four, halt. Dismiss. <laughs> well, here I am. Oh, Andy, I don't understand. Why, you weren't in the Army last week. I was always in the Army. It was just that they put me in civilian clothes for a while doing Secret Service work. Oh, what kind of Secret Service work? Uh, I don't know. It was so secret they didn't even tell me. <laughs> well, sit down, won't you, Andy? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll take off my hat. I'll take it. Oh, never mind. I'll just toss it over here on the table. <laughs> Oh, me, I forgot I had on my helmet. Uh, sorry I busted that vase. Oh, that's all right. Uh, but but how is it that you're wearing a helmet around New York, Andy? Why, most of the fellas just wear overseas caps. Oh, yeah, well, they probably ain't been the thick of it like I am. That's where you really get used to a helmet. Why, up at the battlefront, a helmet is like a second home to a soldier. He washes in it, he do his laundry in it. He even cooks in it. Cooks in it? Really? Yeah, oh, sure. I can remember lots of nights when I has been cooking supper in my helmet over the campfire. Suddenly the bugle blows. Charge the enemy. And I'd go into hand-to-hand fighting with a head full of Irish stew. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd be combing dumplings out of my hair for weeks. Well, this is very interesting, Andy. Uh, come, sit here on the sofa with me and tell me more. Uh, sit on the sofa? Uh, you know, that reminds me. A buddy of mine was sitting on the sofa with a gal, and he pre-posed to her and then retreated. Uh, she was going to sue him for breach of promise. Oh, what happened? Well, she found out that she couldn't sue him on account of you can't sue a man in uniform. Uh, how do you like my uniform? <laughs> well, I've noticed it, and... I think it's very nice. Oh, yeah. Regulation, khaki, brass buttons, and sue proof. Oh, Andy, uh, you don't have to stand. Sit down here on the sofa. Yeah, well, that law about not being able to sue a man in uniform show is funny, ain't it? Uh, you got a clearer picture of the thing. Oh, yes, I understand thoroughly. Good. How about a kiss, honey? Oh, Andy. Well, say, I'm... Oh, I just had a thought. Uh, you know, I'd like you to meet my father. Now, you just wait here a minute. He's right in the next room. I'll go right and get him. Okay, okay. Oh, boy, everything working out great. Gabby sure had an idea there about gals not being able to sue a man in uniform. Eyes in the clear now. Hmm. Having this uniform on has really saved the day. I might even pre-pose to her again, you know what? Andy! Oh, uh, yep. Uh, Corporal Brown, I'd like to have you meet my father, Major Adams. Uh, hello, Corporal. Glad to know you. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah uh, is you a real soldier? <laughs> a real soldier? <laughs> oh, Daddy, will you entertain Corporal Brown a few minutes? I must run up and put some makeup on. Uh, me, too. I'll go with you. Oh, sit down, Corporal. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. I'd like to talk to a soldier that has the campaign ribbons on that you have. Oh. I see by your shoulder patch there that you're in the artillery. Uh, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. About a mobile unit? Mobile? Well, some of the boys are from Mobile. Most of them from Birmingham. <laughs> ah, you soldiers certainly have a sense of humor, all right. I'll say one thing, though. From those campaign ribbons you're wearing, you've certainly done a lot of fighting. Oh, yes, sir. They used to call me Blood and Gutter Brown. <laughs> Yes, sir. I've really been in a lot of battles on the Western Front. The Western Front? Yeah. According to those campaign ribbons, you did all your fighting in the South Pacific. I did? Hmm. No wonder them Germans I shot look so slanty-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> Brown, you're really quite a kidder. Say, wait a minute. Is that an oak leaf cluster I see there? Oh, no, sir, no, sir. That's geraniums. I busted the vase with my helmet. <laughs> No, no, I, I mean on your chest. Oh, 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 on my chest. Uh, <laughs> well, nice to meet up with you, Major. Uh, say goodbye to Sylvia for me, will you? I got to rush back to camp. I see. Uh, what camp are you stationed at? Uh, what camp are you stationed at? Uh, yes, which one? Well, uh, you go out here. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, 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 it's in that direction. Uh, 
But I got to rush right over there, though, oh, right wait now. a minute, wait a minute. Is it possible that you're stationed at Camp Upton? Camp Upton. Uh... Yeah, sir, yeah, sir, that's the one, yeah. And I was late. I'm going direct there now. Well, that's where I'm stationed. Oh, it is, huh? Yes. And I've great news for you, too. What's that? I'm driving back in my car right now, and I'll take you with me. Amos, that was a great idea I had about having Andy make believe he was a soldier. Uh, yeah, by the way, Kingfish, where is Andy? He went over to see Sylvia Adams in the uniform yesterday, and none of us has seen him since. Well, uh, it's possible to, uh, wait a minute, phone, I'll get it. Uh, hello? Hello, Kingfish. Oh, uh, Andy, where's you? Where's you been? I was at Camp Upton. Camp Upton? Now, what are you doing there? Well, it seems that Sylvia's father is a major at Camp Upton, and... I told him I was stationed there, too, so he insisted on driving me back here, and they think I was in the Army. Yeah, well, how can they think that, Andy? You ain't got no papers or nothing. Well, they say that when fellows from overseas get back, sometimes their papers is a month late in arriving. <laughs> and, you know, I got them overseas campaign ribbons on. Yeah, well, now, don't worry. That'll straighten itself out, Andy, but the most important thing... Is Sylvia Adams convinced that you are sue-proof? Yeah, she knows she can't sue me with his uniform on. Oh, good, Andy, good. Then the whole thing was really a great idea. Yeah, except for one thing. Oh, what's that? My battalion leaves for overseas in two hours. Amos and Andy will be back again in just a moment. A Rinso whitewash. With ease. A Rinso bright wash. With safety. <whistles> Rinso white for a wash that's white as it can be. Rinso bright. B R I G H T. Yes, Rinso keeps your colors bright. Get out more dirt for a wash so white. Here's great advice. You can't go wrong. <whistles> Rinso white. <whistles> Rinso bright. Happy little wash day song. Rinso is easy on you, easy on your washable. Gives results that can't be beat. So make next wash day a Rinso wash day. And now, here are Amos and Andy. Well, Andy, old boy, put it there. Put it there, son. Yeah, yeah. There you, so you finally got out of the army, huh? Yeah, I convinced them that I wasn't no soldier. Yeah, well, you sure wasted a couple of days over at the camp. Oh, they wasn't wasted. Uh, I'm at a cute little whack over there. Oh, sure enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, how'd you make out? Well, huh, I got another pink campaign ribbon. Be sure to be with us again next Friday evening at this same time when the makers of Rinso will again present the Amos and Andy Show. This program is broadcast to our armed forces all over the world. This is Harlow Wilcox saying good night to all of you from all of us. Say, ladies, would you deny your own boy medicine if he were ill? Help if he needed help? You know, the waste kitchen fats you save and turn into your butcher are used for military medicines. Military supplies. Those waste fats are urgently needed. And if you're not saving every drop you possibly can, you may be denying your own fighting man help it is in your power to give. Save every drop of used fat. Take it to your butcher regularly. He'll give you four cents and two red points for every pound.
It's only human to perspire. Everybody does. Smart people know that no one is safe from B.O. That's why they use Life Boy in their daily bath. It gives all over head-to-toe protection, and it's lasting protection. Remember, Life Boy is the only soap that's especially made to stop... This is the National Broadcasting Company.